Hi guys, welcome to this session on Microsoft Project. In this module, I want to have a look at the CPI and SPI fields in Microsoft Project. So as you can see on the screen, I've got a small project with the CPI and SPI columns installed. So basically, cost performance indicator and scheduling performance index index it says there but indicator is the same word both of them are set to zero now for this to work you've got to do two things one you need to save a baseline so i have saved a baseline set baseline save the baseline just and you also need to set a status state so on the project tab i've set a status state to the 3rd of november this house house 2 should be completed by the 3rd of november so i've got a status date on the 3rd of november now nothing's filled in yet because i've not updated any tasks but if i just go to the task tab and let's say house number one is completed and as soon as you get that you get a cost there's no variance in cost um it's a one a one is what they should both be at if you're on schedule and on budget, everything should be at one. If this SPI goes above one, you're ahead. If it's below one, you're behind. So let's have a look at this one. So let's do 50% at that one. So now, because we should be 100% at that time, or nearly 100%, this is now coming up with an error message. It's... Um, not got the right amount now if we say let's go back to this one if i say we did that in 10 days and we did this in five days you can see how these now we've got a positive number on the on the um, cpi 1.5 that is on schedule because there's no um scheduling change I haven't changed the start date or anything like that or an end date if I extend it let's go to 30 days obviously now things are starting to happen because the end dates changed and it should have been completed on the 3rd of November now it's not going to be completed even if I go 100% complete on that one um, the status date is only reading to the 3rd of November. So what I need to do is go to the project tab, change that to, let's go for the 15th of December, because I'm just looking when that's finished. 15th of December. OK. And that one there is complete. So it's on schedule, but this one is not. So we're looking for ones is a good score on the door. And we don't want these in minus ones. So if we go, um, let's do this one as complete. It's complete, but um, the CPI is less than 1.86. Now, if we go and look at the resources on that one, we've got extra units because I've extended this. So this is changed from the baseline, which was just one close that off and let's change the status again let's go forward to let's look at this one the 12th of january that should have been completed so let's go to the 12th of january okay 12th of january let's say that this took 10 days and we are 100 percent complete on it and you get A1 and A1. Because that's come back, if I go back to 20, we've got a 0.5, which is we're behind, and this at the top is giving you the running total, so we're behind uh, in terms of scheduling index and the cost performance index as well. Remember, that's looking at the uh, baseline costs against um, baseline performed, work performed. There's a little formula at the bottom there. This one's looking at the base cost work performed and baseline cost work scheduled. 
and there's a little sum at the bottom there as well. So these are just tools that give you an, a bit of an idea of where you're at. It's part of the end value series of things. If you go to the view tab and go to tables and more tables and click on earn value and apply that, you get a lot more information here now. So you've got, there's your planned value. So planned um, 1,000, this is 2,000, that's 500. And you can see how that's moved across, your scheduling variance, cost variance, how these impact each task as you move through your project based on your, if I go back to project, if I change that state to state, if I go back to, oops, today, you see everything disappears, most things disappear in here because uh, I've just changed the state to state. So you can see how important that is. And if I go forward to the end, I think the end date's in June sometime, I'm not quite sure, but if it's going to June, 6th of June it was, anyhow, let's go for that. And then you can see this is sitting there minus a thousand because that's what this task is planned to be and at the moment it hasn't been spent. And there's no cost, uh, cost variance. Uh, you can add those SPI um, columns and CPI columns at the end of this if you want. If you go and have a look at another table, if I go and have a look at the earned value cost indicators apply, you get them in there. CPI comes in there. Um, you see a percentage, 19% overall, 17% on that task. Cost variance is 333 quid. There you go. And then the other one, if I go back into it, more tables, scheduling, apply. So on that task there, 500 quid, 50% minus 0.5 SPI. Remember a, a number less than one is behind schedule. So that's not good. So basically that's a quick look at the SPI and CPI fields and then looking at them together in the earned value tables. And what you need to do is to get your head around how it all works is create a simple project like this and then just work through it. But the key, like I've said many times already, is this needs to be set to the relevant time period. So if I come for the 3rd of January, you know, things start changing and disappearing as they're not relevant. So that's basically a quick look at the SPI and CPI field. So hopefully that was of use to you and thank you for your time. I'll see you in the next one.